Good morning, TCS viewers, and not just a good morning, but an early morning because we've got a long drive to the Crow's Nest Pass area of Alberta, one of the most beautiful places on earth. You can mountain bike, you can hike, you can fish, which I'm going to do on this trip, whether Jordan likes it or not. Now, we wanted to do the Pentax K1, but final firmware is still not quite ready, but we've got an interesting video for you today. We're going to test all the new 24-70s, and we're going to join our good friend Jeremy Fokins. Now, Jeremy's a very talented photographer, but more importantly, he's an artist, and he captures just stunning portraits of people. He knows a lot of the locals down there. He's going to join up with us, and we're going to capture not only the landscape, but also the amazing people that make up this part of Alberta. Jeremy, thanks for having us out here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. What are we planning on uh, doing in the next couple days? We're going to be uh, shooting a couple different things. We got some downhill biking with Troy from Crow's Nest uh, Coffee Company. <laughs> we also got uh, Ian, who's a local blacksmith here. So cool. we're going to be shooting some wonderful locals here in uh, the Crow's Nest Pass. Fantastic. Now, of course, you've been shooting a long time. I know you like your Nikons, but what we'd like you to do over the next couple of days also, we really just want your opinions on what you feel about these lenses, how they're working, how they're handling, how you like them. Sound good? Sounds great. Look forward to it. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, Jeremy, so specifically today what we're going to play with is a whole bunch of stuff. I've got the Canon 24-70. It is the oldest of the four lenses we're looking at, but it is current and it is modern. And we've got the G Master from Sony, their new 24-70. Now, I know you haven't really played on mirrorless yet, have you? No, right? not, not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be an interesting experience because the camera's going to be different, of course, too. Cool. Now, we've got the brand new 24-70 VR from Nikon, their second of this lens. Cool. And you had the first version of this lens, hey? You weren't really happy with it. I did, yeah. Um, I had a couple of zoom lenses. Is, um, kind of switched over to primes, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to try test this new one out actually. It should be fun. And then the Pentax 24 to 70. Yes, Pentax sure. is still in business, they're still going. <laughs> and uh, this is cool. This is their latest lens, and we're excited to try this out. We don't have a full frame camera for Pentax, the other three are full frame, but the K1 is their new full frame camera, and it's just on the horizon. So cool. it'll be a good idea to like you know play with this lens, see what it's like before it goes on this brand new camera. Definitely look forward to it. Fantastic. Let's get out there. Cheers. We're here meeting Troy M. Sagers, Jeremy's good friend, and uh, Troy's an avid cyclist, you know, very extreme stuff, so we're going to use him for some autofocusing tests, but also really awesome, he owns his own coffee roaster, uh, the Crow's Nest Coffee Company. We had some amazing coffee this morning, it's great to see these local businesses thrive. And uh, Jeremy, what kind of shots do you want to get today? So today we're going to be obviously testing a few lenses out uh, with Troy doing some downhill biking. Um, he's going to be doing some pretty fast uh, pace mm. stuff here. So we want to kind of test that focusing, see if we can get the, the shots quite sharp, um, as well as we're going to do some quite intimate portraits, him ah. on the side of the mountain, maybe a bit of lighting, and uh, really test out some of the uh, features in those lenses. Three dudes on a mountain, intimate portraits. It's going to be wonderful. Now, as you can probably tell at home, it's raining pretty good out here, getting really wet. Luckily, all four 24-70s are fully weather sealed, and of course, the bodies are today as well. I want to do some macro stuff here, and you know, all of the 24-70s we're testing today have roughly the same close focus capability, 0.38 meters. The Sony G Master is 0.4, but it's close enough. And at 70 millimeters, I expected that I would get basically the same shot, but it's actually a very interesting story. So the Nikon 24 to 70, it's very close, you know, compared to the Pentax K3, which is a crop sensor and will actually give you a tighter field of view, we're actually getting a very similar macro capability. So that's a big plus for the Nikon. Somewhat disappointing actually is the Canon 24 to 70. It's close focusing capability, not very good actually, still quite far away. The Sony G Master is somewhere in between. So so we're not getting the same macro. I'd say the Nikon's a clear winner. Now another way that we can differentiate these lenses for close-up is their VR capabilities because of course I'm on the side of a hill here, not very stable, I'm hand holding and macro is tough to get stable shots with. So the Nikon, totally image stabilized, I love that. Pentax of course stabilized in the body, so you're going to get that with whatever lens you use. And the Sony's as well, we've got that inbuilt stabilization in the bodies, very helpful for this. So again the Canon guys is kind of a loser here because we don't have any image stabilization in the body or the lens. So very interesting finding and we've got a clear winner with the Nikon and we've got a clear loser with the Canon today. Okay guys, so what we're doing next, we've got Jeremy back there and he's taking some shots of Troy auto-focusing. Now we're doing continuous autofocus, center point on all four cameras because they all have that in common. Now keep in mind, you know, you got to take this with a grain of salt. The body plays such a big part in the autofocusing process as well as the lens. So we're just kind of playing around, getting a feel for the lenses and Jeremy's going to give us some impressions about which lenses seem to do better for autofocusing. You know, nothing major technical, but just a good way to get a, an impression. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the lens? 
I'm good. So, so we really got <laughs> taken out by Troy on our first take with the uh, cannon. We're not off to a great start right now, but uh, we'll see how we'll see how this next take goes. Yeah, it just knocked the hood off. So if there's any doubt that we're getting close enough, that should take care of it. Too much wind resistance! Okay, so Pentax first. I know you haven't played with that one before, but what did you think about that just overall? Um, wonderful. Yeah? Actually, I was quite surprised. Uh, it, it, it felt good. Um, look good. Yeah, the Pentax loved it. It was great. Yeah, you're saying you got a really good hit rate on that. Hey, maybe focusing a little bit slower than the Canon Nikon, but it was, it was biting on when you needed it to. It was sharp. It, yeah. It was very sharp. It was silent. It's great. I really, in, actually, really enjoyed that Pentax. Uh oh, uh oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I gotta swap over. Uh, they need more people using their cameras for sure. <laughs> All right, now the Sony. I know this is mirrorless, so this is gonna yes. be the kind of odd man out in this thing. That delay, obviously, because it is mirrorless. Yeah, it takes viewfinder, some getting used to. It does. You do have to anticipate that action. So hmm. that that was a a shocker right from the start. Absolutely. <laughs> so it was a little bit tricky and obviously that might not be quite fair comparing it to an SLR, but it was fine. What would you say overall best focusing? What were you still most confident with? Um, confidence wise, definitely in Nikon because I am used to it. Yeah. Canon was great, felt great, focus great. Um, yeah. Awesome. Nice and smooth. Um, but I think I was more surprised by the Pentax. Interesting. It was like, I, I like this. This feels oh, good. Yeah. There you go. Can you believe it? From TCS TV host, I'm now knocked down to being Jeremy's assistant, but I am happy to do it. Now, the thing is we're shooting all four lenses on the A7R so we can have parity between all the shots, the same sensor, so we can compare things like micro contrast, the look, you know, that kind of stuff, which means we have to use adapters. Now, the tricky part is when I use the new Nikon with this new electronic aperture, there's no way to actuate the aperture mechanically. So we're back to doing the classic trick, set the aperture on the camera, push down depth of preview, take the lens off, and that will lock that aperture down. So it's slow going, but it's working. All right, so you think you got some shots that you like? Yeah, I think we got some, yeah. Fantastic. Looks good. All right, so we're gonna wrap then for the afternoon and we'll head back and take a look at the photos and then we can really evaluate them. All right, Jeremy, done your shot already? Almost. It's time to swap cameras, dude. Okay. All right. All right. You're hogging the Nikon all the time. I can't help it, man. Come oh, on. Jeez. God, Chris, you and your aperture priority mode. The light's consistent. It's called exposure compensation. What's wrong with aperture priority mode? There's everything. Now, if you come up to the Crow's Nest Pass, you cannot miss Frank's slide, literally. Just a field of limestone. You know, on April 29th, 1903, about 4.10 in the morning, people in the town of Frank are asleep, and basically a whole face of the mountain, 90 million tons of limestone come down, crush the entire city, and come all the way up the other mountainside here. Just unbelievable to even imagine what happened. It is. It's incredible. It's Canada's deadliest uh, landslide. The original town still sits under this rock to this day. Mm -hmm. Coming out here, you're going to see how impressive and how crazy this disaster is. It really is a sobering fact and it really was just a horrible tragedy but it also nowadays creates a beautiful landscape and now we have this very unique and very interesting landscape so Jeremy and I are going to go around and shoot it and get some amazing photos hopefully in this light. All right, so back for day two, and Jeremy, tell us what we're gonna be doing out here today. 
So today we're uh, out here in Blairborn, the Crow's Nest Pass. We're here with Ian from Lions Creek Forge. He does a lot of rod iron work here, works with a lot of various types of metals and mm -hmm. forging some really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we're going to be uh, doing some uh, some really cool environmental portraits within Ian's shop here. Um, Very cool. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah, what we're hoping to do today is test things like out of focus rendition on the lenses, hopefully get a lot of sparks and stuff like that going on. Yep. And we'll do a res test as well, see just how sharp these lenses are. Should be fun. Let's go do it. Sounds good. All right, so what I want to talk about now is the out-of-focus rendition on these lenses. That we can see on the back of the screens well enough. And when it comes to the Pentax, we are still getting that sort of onion shape in the bouquet. So the circles have these concentric rings. We saw that also on the Tamron 24 to 70, so there might be some common lineage there. We're not quite sure. Now the Canon lens actually rendered very, very well. Nice circles, good out of focus rendition, nothing crazy going on. And the Nikon had a very, very similar look to it. But when you look at the out of focus areas towards the edge of the frame, you're getting those cat's eye shapes, very distinct, and frankly, not that flattering, unfortunately. The clear winner is still gonna be the Sony G Master. I know we keep saying Sony, but they advertise that the autofocus bouquet on this lens was the best they've ever made, and we have to agree with that. Nice, soft circles, beautiful shape, no cat size at the corners. The Sony did a great job. And we wanna thank Ian for letting us use his shop. This was a fantastic opportunity, but to check the resolution test, we need to use a computer screen. So we're heading back to Jeremy's place, and we're gonna take a look at them there. Okay, so we're back home. We've had a look on the computer. These are our resolution tests. I think it's important for the folks at home to remember we took all four lenses, put them on the same Sony A7R body. That way we've got the same resolution, the same sensor, it's apples right. to apples. And also, we're not shooting a laboratory, hey? I mean, this, no, is, we're not. this is real world tests, but I think we still did a pretty good job and we can formulate some general opinions about these lenses, hey? Definitely, you could take three copies of the same lens and you're gonna get still some variances in the results. So Absolutely, right? Yep. even lens to lens, you could have some differences. Definitely. I'm gonna start off with the Sony. Okay. Um, overall, the Sony did a beautiful job optically. I mean, 2.8 mm -hmm. was decent, whether we were at the wide angle or yep. the 70 mil focal length. Uh, interesting enough, we did find that the Sony a little bit better at 70 millimeter, you know, towards the longer end, very, very good. In fact, I'd say it was probably the sharpest overall of all the lenses that we tested. I agree that that 70, uh, that so 70 focal length, um, that close up of that portrait was, was wonderful. Great results. Beautiful. Now on the flip side, the Pentax was actually the opposite because at the wide focal length, it actually did better than at the telephoto range. Um, pretty good, but overall I'd say on the heap of the pile of lenses we're looking at, it's a bit towards the softer side. Um, it definitely though gets really good stop down, but you gotta stop the aperture mm -hmm. down. Overall, the Pentax reminds me of another uh, Tamron. 24 to 70 kind of lens on the market. <laughs> Again, I keep hinting on that. I don't know if there's any correlation or not. What would you feel about the Nikon 24 to 70? Nikon was good. Um, I used to own the, old, the the first version, the 24 right. to 70. To be honest, not a fan. I mm -hmm. actually hated it. I sold it. Um, but uh, I was quite excited when you guys had the second version. The new one. So that was really cool. Um, testing it out overall, it, it, it was a bit soft. Um, Mm -hmm. Didn't perform that ver that well. However, um, wide open at 70 in the corners was crap. Um, yeah, it was really good. But <laughs> but consistently within the test that we did, it 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 was consistent. It was consistently yeah. yeah. It was interesting. I noticed the 70 mil wasn't very good either. It was kind of funny. Very unique yeah. for that kind of lens. Yeah. The Canons were great. I've never shot a Canon. Mm -hmm. However, you know, seeing these uh, seeing this lens test out, it was. It was wonderful, um, sharp all the way around, consistent. The quality was great, both yeah. in the corners and in the center. Yeah, great, great, great test. I think you got it there. It's like the consistency. You know, the nice thing about the Canon, unlike some of the other lenses we play with, is you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. it at a certain range. Just zoom mm -hmm. wherever, yep. whatever aperture, you're going to get good, consistent results. And there's a lot to be said for that. There is. You know, the Sony, I would say at 70 millimeters wide open, not quite as good as the Canon. Mm -hmm. Again, the only thing I'd say is when you do stop it down, the Sony might give you a little bit of resolution advantage. But overall, that Canon, fantastic and consistent. Awesome. Yeah. 
All right, Jeremy, so we started this whole trip in the rain, and it looks like we're going to end it in the rain, too. Yeah. It hasn't really stopped the whole time, but no. we had a hell of a time. We had a great time out here. And I uh, got to try a lot of interesting Zooms. It's not often. I mean, you don't get to play with different brands of Zooms on a regular basis. I hey, don't. No, you know, some surprises. You like the Pentax. That blew my mind. That's good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, overall, do you, do you feel like Zooms are the way to go now for you again? Like, could you uh, do that? To answer your question, no. However, mm. we did see some great things, um, but... You know, with those great things, you do still have to make some compromises. Yeah. And in, you know, in that, I, I'm still I'm still going to be going back to my primes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some shots that you wanted to get. Right. And I know you could do the zoom, but you yeah. still went to your bag. You got some primes, it, right? It's all good, but we still got some good shots. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for the people at home, I know we didn't get to test everything like, you know, chromatic aberration and stuff. But that's mm -hmm. easily fixed in post. And flare, well... It's been raining the whole time, but you know, hopefully you guys found this uh, quite useful at home. You know, just an interesting kind of comparison. Overall, the Tamron, I mean Pentax 24 to 70 2.8, um, you know, still exhibiting those kind of funny out of focus characteristics. You know, not super sharp, but it's definitely affordable. Mm -hmm. And then you know, the Canon always fantastic. It's good, Nikon, we're getting the good close up capability. The VR is a nice touch, but maybe not still there optically where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And the Sony, I think we both agree. Hey, I mean that was a surprise. Looking at the files, most of the ones we picked out as saying like, oh, that looks really good, yep. almost always was the Sony G Master. The Sony was good. The Sony. Oh, you know, it, it looked really, really nice. It did. Um, but, you know, we also, the Canon did, did well as well. Canon was great too. Yeah. I mean, did. all the lenses did good. Yeah. Overall, the Sony is the most expensive too. We got to keep that in mind. So it was great that you were able to wrangle up some fantastic people that we mm -hmm. could shoot with, right? I mean, Ian from Lions Creek Forge did a great job. He did. Fantastic to get in the shop there and do some cool stuff. And of course, Troy, mountain biking forest, Crow's Nest Coffee Company owner. I mean, it was really nice of him to bring us in and let us use those facilities as well. Definitely. But of course, that's all thanks to you, Jeremy. We oh. had a really good time, guy. Thank you so much much for having us out here Thanks for and me. uh check out jeremy folkins stuff check out jeremyfolkins.com you're on instagram you're on twitter of you course we all there. are and of course <laughs> we're gonna see you in the store you're such a great customer but we really appreciate it we had a fantastic time and hopefully you folks at home also had a fantastic time and uh, as usual we'll see you guys very very soon thanks for joining us cheers